Hello everyone, the purpose of this video is to teach you what a functor is, specifically in TypeScript. So a functor is defined by a map function from A to B, and it could be said that it's some kind of container that has, you see this f is a functor, so first we have an f of A, a functor of A, and then we have a function from A to B. And after the map function, we end up with a functor. But the value inside is no longer an A, but AB. And for any kind of thing to become a, a functor, it needs to abide by these two laws. The identity law and the composition law. The identity law says that mapping anything by the identity should remain the same. This seems pretty obvious, but it's really important. The second law is the composition law. You remember composition from high school? That says that composing the f and g functions and then mapping should have exactly the same behavior as first mapping with one function, mapping with g and composing together. And this should be the same. So let's begin by implementing this in TypeScript. You can think of functor as just an interface. You see, we contain the value a and then a, a map function, which receives a function. So map is a higher order function. It contains a function from a to b. And the end result of calling map, it's going to be a functor of b. And we're going to use these helper functions, not really useful, as you see, the identity function just receives an x and returns the same value. And the composition function is, as you were taught in high school, is equal to calling the function of f and then calling function g. So f receives a function from b to c and g is a function from a to b. And the end result from compose, as you can see, is that we receive an input a and at the end, we have an output C. So let's start by defining a class. We're going to call it box of A. This box has nothing really interesting. Let's say for now that we have a value of type A. And then we're going to say that we're going to have a static method of, of type A that it's going to return a box of A. And this is going to return a new box of A. Because I don't want to use the new keyword every time I want an instance of A box. Instead, I just want to use the static function of. And then we're going to add a small trick. Please disregard this, this is just a trick so that we have an easier time figuring out the contents of the box. So for now, let's just say we want a box of two and we want to output this. Let's execute now this TypeScript code. As you see, we ended up with a box of two. So our box right now doesn't do anything interesting, but if we want box to be a functor, we can do the following implements functor of a. And as you see, in order for our box to be a functor, we need to implement the map function. We didn't have an act of b. We need a function from a to b. And we're going to return a box of b. And the implementation from this is quite straightforward. We're going to return a box of calling this function and the value. And now our box is a functor. And you see it's not complaining anymore. But now we need to check if our box really is a functor or not by making sure it abides the laws of functors. So let's just check the first law, the identity law, and see if our functor abides this law. We're going to make a box of two again, then we're going to map 
the identity function. And as you see, mapping through the identity, our input remained unchanged. But for checking the second law, the composition law, we're going to need some helper functions. So let's just define a function f, which takes a number and returns the number time, times two. And then we're going to define the second function called g, which is going to also take a number. But since we want to do all the operations on the number type, we want to also change from number to string. Let's just do something a bit more interesting. Like for example, number has this true local string. We're going to pass s because this is where I'm from. And then here we're gonna pass an object with style. We're gonna pass currency. And then currency is gonna be euros. And now we are going to test the composition laws. So first we say composition law, and we're going to create a box of 21. And we're going to map once, and we're going to compose our G function and an F function. And composition reads right to left. And then let's see what happens now. As you noticed, the first function is multiplying by two, our 21 value inside the box. And then our second function is turning that number into a currency. So we ended up with a box of 42, the meaning of life, euros. Not very useful, but as you see, our box knew we were starting with the number at the end we had a box of a string. And now to truly grasp the composition law, we need to check without the composition if this still holds. So let's do that again. And then box of 21, mapping F and mapping G should have exactly the same result, 22. See, exactly the same result. So our small box, truly is a functor because it fulfills, it satisfies the two laws of functors, identity law and composition law. And now for the biggest plot twist. Let's import effect from effect. And let's just say we want to apply these functions, but to effect. So our box is going to be effect. And you notice immediately that effect doesn't have an off function to lift a value inside the effect, but it has a succeed function, which does exactly what we want. And we cannot directly map on effect, but we can do the following. We can dot pipe and then we can effect.map through the identity. And here we're going to do the same, effect.pipe, then call effect.map on the composition, effect.pipe, effect.map, and then effect.map on G. And as you see, the code is no longer complaining. But if we run this, we're gonna get a really ugly thing because we cannot do the trick that we did here for cleanness into effect. But we have a trick. Effect comes with a console that allows us to peek into the inner workings or the value of effect. So I'm just going to comment this and then I'm going to do something awful. I'm going to copy and paste a lot of code because I don't want to type it by hand. You see, effect comes with this generator syntax. But in reality, these functions remain the same. We are just checking here the same. We are logging the results of the first operation, and then we are checking for the composition law, and we finally 
we run the program. So let's see if this now works. Ta -da! Did you notice? Effect behaves exactly as our implemented functor, which means, drum roll. Yes, indeed, effect is a functor. But obviously, effect is way more than just a functor. But if you want to know more, please like this video and subscribe to this channel, and I might teach you what all the things effect actually is if you're interested in functional programming. See you soon.